So let's talk about this concept of proportionality. This is the second mini lecture, incidentally, for 7.3, 7.4. So proportionality. Uh, consider a car traveling at 70 mi 75 miles per hour. Um, we have a chart here that I'm going to fill out, at least partially. I don't know if I'll fill out everything here. But I, I'd like to talk about um, you know, how far the car has gone at various points of time. And we can really get started anywhere here. Um, let's see. Well, here's one easy way to get started. So the time t is supposed to be in minutes, incidentally. We're going 75 miles per hour. So in 60 minutes, that's one hour, we've gone 75 miles. OK, so that, that was kind of easy. Well, what else do we have? Um, well, let's see. Half of that would be 30 minutes. So in 30 minutes, you're going to have gone half of 75 miles. And um, what's that, 37.5 miles. So that's how far you've gone in half an hour, 30 minutes. What else could we do? Um, I'm just going to try to think of easy things. Let's think about 20 minutes. OK, 20 is a third of an hour. So in a third of an hour, we will have gone a third of 75 miles, which is 25. And then we could use this to figure out 40. 40, it's going to be 50 miles. And we could also figure out 10 and 30. Well, we've already done 30. The 10, let's see, that's going to be half of that, right? So that's going to be 12.5. And let's see, 20, 30, 40. Uh, 50, I, I could just add on another 12.5 to the 50, so that's 62.5. All right, so then um, well, it's another, what's another easy one? Well, let's, let's see, a fifth of 60 is 12. A fifth of 75 is 15. So in 12 minutes, we'll have gone 15 miles. So that means in 24 minutes, we'll have gone 30 miles. 36 minutes, we'll have gone 45 miles. And in 48 minutes, we'll have gone 60 miles. Okay, you see, you just kind of keep filling it in like that. Uh, maybe I'll stop there. I'll leave it to you to think about 5, but just you know, divide the 12.5 in half, and then you can use that to figure out things like 50, 15, 25, and so on. Okay, so we see in, in general that um, the ratio of d to t, distance to time, remains constant. So no matter which of these pairs I pick, um, 30 over 24, 15 over 12, 37.5 uh, over 30. If I pick any of those, you know, and I figure out that quotient, it's always going to be 1.25. So that ratio remains constant. Or in other words, the distance is always 1.5 times the time. So this is a, a special relationship between these two variable quantities, d and t. In general, if the two variables, x and y, are related by this equation, y equals k times x, where k is a constant, then y is proportional to x, and k is called the constant of proportionality. So, so basically, if you want to determine whether two amounts are proportional to each other, um, write an equation that relates them. And if that equation has this very simple form, then they're proportional. If not, then they're not proportional. Another way of thinking about it is to think about if the quotient of the two amounts is always the same. So let's look at a couple examples. If y is the area of a square whose sides have length x, is y proportional to x? Okay, well, the answer here is no. 
because you know we're talking about area. Okay, the area is y. Side length is x. So the, the area y is equal to x times x or x squared. So this is not y equals x times a constant. So, so the answer then is no. Just because of that, that form of that equation. But here's a kind of a good rule of thumb to think about when you're trying to figure these things out. If the, if the amounts are proportional, then doubling one should also double the other. So think about these squares. Suppose I double the side length of the square. What happens to the area? Does the area double? Well, no, it doesn't. If I double the length of the square, the area quadruples. You see, I can see four little squares in there. Okay, so if, if the variables are proportional, doubling one doubles the other. Like with the driving example, if I, if I drive for twice as long, I'm going to go twice as far. If I drive half as long, I'm going to go half as far. That doesn't happen with the area. If I make the square twice as wide, then the area does not become twice what it was. It becomes four times what it was. So like if, if you take a pizza, here's an example. If you take a pizza and you double the diameter of the pizza, you do not double the amount of pizza. You actually, actually quadruple the amount of pizza. So, you know, just adding one or two inches to a pizza that you're ordering um, dramatically increases the amount of food that you're getting because they're not actually proportional. The area increases faster than the, the radius of the pizza, how far across it is. Um, okay, but in this next example, we see something else happening. If Y is the total amount paid for X pounds of pistachios, uh, that costs 963 per pound, it's a typo, is y proportional to x. I have no idea if that's a reasonable amount for pistachios, by the way. But is y proportional to x? Well, y is the total amount, and it's going to be x times you know, the, the price per pound. So it's 963 per pound. It's times the number of pounds that you're buying. Okay, well that, that's exactly what we're looking for. See, the 963 is the K. So therefore, the answer is yes. We could think about our, our rule of thumb again. If I double the amount of pistachios I'm buying, am I going to be paying twice the amount? Well, the answer is yes. That's because you're buying them in bulk. If, um, if, if you're not buying in bulk, then often that's not the case. And we all know that. Yeah, we know that you know, if, you're, if you're going down the aisle at the grocery store, you know, they'll sell um, like the little can of coffee and the big can of coffee. Um, maybe the big can of coffee holds twice as much as the little can. But if you look at the prices, the big can, it's usually less than twice the amount of the little can. Okay, and and there, there's reasons for that, because there's a certain amount that's paid just for the, um, the packaging process and so on. So, you know, if you're, if you're buying something in a package, um, usually the price is not proportional to the amount. The greater the amount, um, the less you're paying per unit. So, you know, if you buy the bigger can of coffee, you'll pay more for that bigger can. But, you know, the cost of the coffee per ounce or per pound is cheaper. <coughs> um, and... You know, I, I used to always go on about this with students because it's important for shopping. Um, but then they, they informed me that if you look on the little price um, tags on the, uh, the shelf at HEB, it actually tells you how the prices compare, unit per unit. So if you're not using that, make sure you do. Um, but, you know, you, you can see how, how they, they um, you know, they're not proportional. If you buy things in bulk, like at, when you're in the produce section, um, you know, and you just you're just using the shovel to put something in the bag, and then weigh it on the little scale, then that is proportional to the amount that you're buying. 
you know, we buy gas at the gas tank, at the gas pump. That's proportional. Um, one thing that's not proportional that I will probably talk about in class is um, your electric bill. Because your electric bill has, um, there's usually like a flat fee for just for the usage of the infrastructure and all that. And then there's a, there's a fee for your electricity usage, which depends on your kilowatt hours that you use each month. So there's a flat part, and that flat part makes those two amounts not, um, not proportional. And um, mo most, most kinds of plans, you know, your utilities bills, phone bills, things like that, they have that flat part in there. And um, when a company tries to get you to switch from one service to another, um, usually they're just lowering one of those two parts. Either they're lowering the flat fee or they're lowering the usage rate. But they're usually raising the other one. And sometimes you'll save money and sometimes you won't, but you have no idea until you do the math and figure out what the break even is, which we'll talk about a bit in class. So this is something to think about. On the homework, you'll see an, an exercise involving taxi cabs. Okay, that's the kind of relationship that I'm talking about right now. So pay attention to those.